All right, we're here at the uh, Sand Mountain Research and Extension Center. I'm Kent Stanford, Extension Specialist, uh, housed here at the station. Uh, we've had an interesting project going on this summer here, more of a demonstration project uh, than a research project. Uh, we had a 22-acre field that we put into some summer annual grasses, a couple of different varieties of millet, uh, and then a sedan grass hybrid as well. We've made high moisture baleage out of it. You can see it here. Uh, in the background, uh, have, have it wrapped and uh, staged here so that it's convenient uh, for our winter feeding season. Now, one of the uh, the, the, the issues or considerations uh, when putting up uh, baleage or haylage is uh, that you need to address wildlife exclusion. Uh, as this stuff in siles and, and the, uh, the smell gets to be a little stronger, uh, you'll have wildlife that are attracted to that. And we want to be sure that uh, nothing gets in here, opens up uh, any any of the plastic and allow oxygen to get into, uh, into our pack. So it's important that we try to address wildlife exclusion. We've uh, been working out here this morning getting our fence installed. Uh, we anticipate being able to feed this uh, 90 or 100 days from now. Uh, so that's a critical time that, uh, that we want to make sure that uh, we've got our uh, haylage put up in the right place and, uh, and that no wildlife do get in there. So we brought in uh, Norm Haley. He's our regional Extension agent in forestry, wildlife, and natural resources. Norm's provided uh, kind of the layout and design on our exclusion fence. And we'll bring Norm in here next uh, to show you what we've done on our fence this morning. All right, like Kent said, my name is Norm Haley. I'm the forestry, wildlife, and natural resources agent here in Northeast Alabama. They were kind enough to bring me in on this project to look at maybe trying to exclude some of the wildlife issues that they have um, without any, any other type of measures installed. So the primary considerations we have here are going to be raccoon and then also coyote. So, like you tend to do on the farm, you make use of what you've got. Um, we had some poly tape, uh, some poly tape uh, fencing, um, some, some round wire fencing, and then some of the some of the more standard cable that you have here. Now, the way we got to keep out raccoons and coyotes can be a little bit different. Of course, a raccoon's a smaller built animal. We've got to make sure they don't come underneath that hot wire fence and also don't step over or through it. That's why on this outside uh, perimeter, we've got a wire set up at that four to six inch length and another one four to six inches above that. That's going to keep the majority of our raccoons from slipping under this without getting poked or also stepping through the wire like they like to. If you get that up about that six or that uh, 10 to 12 inch size, they're not going to step over it very easy either. As far as the coyotes are concerned, it's ideal if you're really looking to keep coyotes out that are very persistent, you want to fence about five to six foot high. Um, Using the materials that we have, we don't have insulator posts. So what we decided to do is come in about two foot uh, outside of, or inside of the perimeter and keep our fence at two and a half and then at three foot high. What we're looking to do here is one, increase the distance that coyote has to jump while also getting getting a, away with a little bit less height. Um, now the way we're going to teach these animals uh, the, the way to avoid these fence and just the kind of issue that they may have if they approach it, um, one tried and true trick is just take a little bit of uh, aluminum foil and apply a dab of peanut butter to the inside of that foil. It doesn't take much. Peanut butter has a pretty strong, strong smell. And then simply wrap that peanut butter and foil right back around that fence. They'll come up there, they'll try to lick it, get a, get, get a good poke, realize the threat of the fence, and hopefully not come back again. The key with setting up an electric fence, whether it's to protect haylid like we have here, or whether it's a small garden, or maybe a food plot, is put your fences up early and keep them hot and teach your animals with, with, uh, with the peanut butter and foil trick here. Secondly, if we're lucky, um, we're going to set up some trail cameras here throughout the fence and maybe try to get some reactions to some animals as they come up here and approach it and show you all how, how effective the fence can be. All right, we finished our uh, fence up from earlier that we showed you. Got our uh, our end finished up here as well. Wanted to show you the gate set up that we've, that we've got. Uh, again, we may not be uh, going in and out here for another uh, two or three months or longer, so we want to exclude these uh, wildlife that can create issues for us, but we still got to have access on this end. So a very simple gate set up. Since we do need access and this will have to go uh, open and close from time to time, uh, we were not able to do our staggered offset uh, as we did on the other side. So in order, to, uh, in order to deal with that, we've gone a little higher. You can see that, that we've got a top strand of poly tape up here. 
Uh, that will help with the coyotes and, uh, and the coyote attempting to jump over uh, the fence. As we work our way down, uh, our strands get closer and, uh, and a shorter distance uh, spacing on those strands. Real simple setup here. We've just used a piece of PVC pipe, drilled a hole through it, and, uh, and ran our poly tape through there uh, with a little string to, uh, to close it, just a traditional uh, wire gap type setup. Show you the ease to, uh, to get in and out. This keeps the strands separated. We've got one of the poly uh, posts there in the middle, and we'll walk around for you. All right, so even though this, uh, this looks like it's uh, fairly complicated at the time, and it might get a little twisted when we bring it back, since we're using the PVC pipe instead of individual handles, our fence should work like it's supposed to. Allows us access when it comes time to feed and keeps unwanted critters out.